Hi, Lloyd Reber here to demonstrate how to use SPSS, a popular statistical package for the social sciences. In fact, SPSS originally was an acronym for Statistical Package for the Social Sciences. But like a lot of old acronyms in the business world, the meaning behind the letters no longer officially applies. So the tool's name is just SPSS. Actually, I think the official name is IBM SPSS Statistics, given that IBM bought the SPS company in 2009. This video is part of my online course, Statistics and Education for Mere Mortals, but I think the video will be helpful to anyone wanting a quick introduction to SPSS. Now, there are a lot of videos out there on SPSS, so this video will take the mere mortals approach and try to get right to the heart of using SPSS for running typical statistical analyses found in evaluation and research work in the field of education. Analyses such as the analysis of variance, t-tests, and correlations. This video is intended to be viewed near the end of my online course because by then everyone will have spent quite a bit of time learning how to calculate those statistical analyses by hand. Well, they also use Excel to help kind of do the grunt work. Only after you do this groundwork will you understand and appreciate the output that SPSS will give us. If you have not calculated those analyses yourself and instead jumped right to this video, then you'll likely have little understanding of the SPSS output you'll see in this video. It is true that once you learn the fundamentals of statistics, you will likely never again compute those sorts of statistics by hand and instead use tools like SPSS. But don't fall prey to the idea that the time spent learning how to do the calculations is a waste of time. I don't think there is a substitute or shortcut to this kind of understanding. I'll also use the spreadsheets constructed by everyone in my online course as the starting point for my demonstrations in this video. A wonderful feature of SPSS is the option to import your data from Excel spreadsheets. But these need to be formatted properly for SPSS. Fortunately, it will take mere seconds to revise the spreadsheets we made during the course. Okay, let's get started. To begin, what I've done is I've made three folders on my desktop. One for the analysis of variance, one for the t-test, and one for the Pearson R correlation. And inside of each, I've simply put a copy of the Excel spreadsheets that we made after going through the Excel video tutorials we did in the course. So I'm going to start this introduction to SPSS by starting with the last spreadsheet that we built in the course, the analysis of variance. So let me open up that folder and there you see my spreadsheet. Let me go ahead and open that up. And let me, let me scroll, scroll to the top. And so if you went through that Excel video tutorial, you'd probably recall this output here. So yeah, this does not look like something that we can easily use in, in SPSS, but just watch how simple this next step is going to be. In SPSS, SPSS really acts like a spreadsheet in many ways. At least the data need to be formatted like a spreadsheet. And the idea there is to have each row as a person and each column as a variable. And it turns out, if I go right here and copy this, this is exactly what we're going to need for SPSS. And in fact, only that. Everything else in the spreadsheet are the calculations that we did by hand. Well, we are not going to worry about that because we're going to let SPSS do all that work. So I've copied that and I go and open up a new workbook in Excel. Now I'm going to paste that information into it. Very simple as you can see. The first row is going to be the header information and each row after that is going to be a person who participated in my little research study. And you'll notice that we have group 1, group 2, and group 3. And you may recall, if you went through the Excel video tutorial, what those group numbers actually mean. And if you don't, here is a little reminder from the uh, PowerPoint presentation. So in that example, we uh, imagine having a, uh, a tutorial where we were studying the use of graphics, animated graphics, static graphics, and no graphics. And so what we had was a null hypothesis that these three uh, treatment conditions were going to result in no significant differences. 
So we can imagine then uh, group one, that number one being animated graphics, group two, static graphics, and group three, no graphics. And so if I go back now to the Excel spreadsheet, we see again just that number corresponding to the particular group. And this is exactly how we set it up for SBSS. So now let me just save this with a little different name. I'll just call it ANOVA-SPSS. Save it into that same folder. Excellent. Okay, let me go back now to my uh, desktop. And again, we can see that we have uh, the two Excel files. Okay, now I'm going to launch SPSS. And obviously this implies that you have access to SPSS as well. Many universities provide a site license to SPSS. So if you are a uh, university person, student or faculty or staff, you might check to see what access you have to SPSS. I will also tell you that if you go to the SPSS website, you can download a 30-day free trial version. All right, I actually have it here in my dock. Let me launch it. Okay, and uh, the first uh, splash screen that comes up is actually a, a very important one because it has links to some really good tutorials. So I really invite you to take a look at the tutorials later on. So what we're going to do now is open up a data set. In fact, I can go ahead and close this screen right here. And you can see actually the empty data window kind of looks like a spreadsheet. But what we're going to do is go up to File, come down to Open, and then choose Data. All right, now let me go to my desktop. And uh, you will find that SPSS is a little clunky. It actually has a mainframe type of feel, and this is partly because of its history as a first a mainframe software tool. Now I go into ANOVA and say, oh no, there's nothing there. Well, that's because it's looking for a certain file type. It's actually looking for a SPSS uh, file type called .sav, but we want to say, no, 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 we're going to look for an Excel spreadsheet file type. And uh, we can see there uh, a variety of things. This, uh, These two here at the bottom are kind of like little ghost images that uh, show up on the Macintosh side of things. But we can see we have ANOVA-SPSS. That's the one we want right there. We're going to open that. And the really the most important thing here is that we do want to read the variable names from the first row of data. So that's very important that that is checked. If you recall, we had uh, that first row with that header information. All right, I'm going to click OK. Various screens open up and close. But now, yeah, we are in SPSS, and we see that we have our data. And again, it looks very similar to the spreadsheet, but uh, I just love the fact that we can uh, very easily import our data from an Excel spreadsheet. We can also just type in the data manually into SPSS, but I like working with, with spreadsheets. All right, great. Our next step, of course, should be to quickly save this file. So let me go up to File and choose to Save As. And again, I'm saving it in the same folder. And I'll just call it uh, ANOVA Analysis. And there we go. So now I'm only going to be working with this SPSS data file. I no longer need that Excel file. All right, what do we do next? Well, I'm just going to really cut to the chase here of what I want to do. Uh, again, SPSS is a, is a very powerful statistical package that can do just so many different things. But I'm kind of using what I call the 595 rule, which is that you tend to use 5% of a tool's options and capabilities 95% of the time. So what I want to do is analyze this data. And if you go up here to the... Uh, uh, the menu bar, you see that we have a choice, Analyze. All right, let's see what we have there. Well, this is an analysis of variance, and that's all about comparing means. I'll go down to that, and I go over, and I see, yes, I have a one-way analysis of variance. So let me go ahead and choose that. All right, so we have a, a little window here where I need to tell SPSS, well, what are my dependent variables and what factors do I have? Well, this is a very simple analysis. The group is going to be my factor because I have three levels of a factor, namely the 
uh, use of graphics and I just have one dependent variable, the, the post test. So I'm going to click on post test and move that into the dependent list. And you might recall from the video that I, I need to uh, potentially run some sort of post hoc analysis and I ran there a Tukey HSD for, for honestly significant differences and so if I go to post hoc there's the one called Tukey, which is the same one, HSD. It doesn't say H HSD, but I know that is it. So I'll click Continue. And uh, let's just go ahead and click OK and see what we get. Well, there you go. We have a, an ANOVA summary table, and we have the post hoc test here as well, doing the multiple comparisons on the means. Uh, and that's important. We can't just run t-tests, as you know, because that would increase what's called the family-wise error rate, whereas these post hoc tests control for that. So we're always only going to be analyzing for significance at the 0.05 level. Well, okay, let's again take a look now back at the original spreadsheet that we did by hand to see if these things actually uh, line up. So let me just leave that there, and I'll pull up the original spreadsheet. So let me go back to my desktop and I'll pull up the original spreadsheet with all of its messiness. And we'll go down to the bottom here. What was our F value? 20.74. So let me go back to SPSS and we see a F value of 20.74. And you also will notice in the summary table um, the sums of squares, and if I go back to the spreadsheet, let me see if I can't move things around here a little bit so I can see it all at one time. In fact, I can move this over as well. Yeah, okay, there we go. Yeah, so the uh, sums of squares of the between groups, also known as the treatment, you can see this number matches this number exactly at least to two decimal points we have the within groups I think that was right here so we see that as being uh, the same and uh, we have the sums of square total which is right here and degrees of freedom well if I scroll down we see we have uh, between groups two within groups uh, nine and uh, total eleven so if you've been through the online course, you know something about these particular, these particular numbers. And uh, finally, you see in this column the mean square, which we have over here. Again, it matches exactly. And uh, just to kind of prove the point also again of where these numbers come from, let me go back to my PowerPoint that actually talked about these particular calculations. Now this is just a repeat of what I showed in the analysis of variance Excel tutorial that we had. So we have the F values being simply a ratio of the between groups variance divided by the within groups variance which is going to be a very simple calculation of the mean square of the treatment divided by the mean square of the error. But where does that come from? Well it comes from the numerator being the sums of square of the treatment divided by the degrees of freedom of the, of the treatment and all of that then is going to be divided by the sum of square error which is then so divided by the degrees of freedom of the error so you have that numerator and the denominator but what I like is the fact that the our Excel spreadsheet shows all of those calculations but once we know that we can let SPSS now just do the work of doing the calculation for us okay well let's go back now to SPSS all right, well, let's go and run that analysis one more time. Go back to the uh, data view here and then go up to analyze. Again, come down to compare means and choose one way analysis of variance. And as you can see, it remembers what I chose last time. It has the same information now as uh, in the dependent variable list, the post test, and the factor is group. And again, I'll choose post talk and you'll see that two key is still chosen. But I also want to show you options and for example we can have it display some other uh, statistics as well. I think it would be very helpful to show some very basic 
descriptive statistics. So I'll click continue now, and click OK. And you see what it will do, it will simply add more information to my output window. And so now I have the very same information before, except now I have the descriptive statistics as well. And I should go down and again show the post hoc test. This is just a repeat explanation of what I talked about in my Excel video tutorial about the analysis of variance. So what we have here is a comparison of all of the pairs. You can see we have a comparison between 1 and 2, 1 and 3, 2 and 1, 2 and 3, and then 3 and 1, and 3 and 2. So we're looking for the uh, little asterisk here because the little asterisk in this column, as it says, it shows that that means that difference is significant at the 0.05 level. So apparently we have a significant difference between groups 1 and 3, but not between groups 1 and 2. We have here a significance between 2 and 3, but not 2 and 1. Of course, the 2 and 1 is redundant from up here, but we do have a significant difference between groups 2 and 3. And if I come down here, well, it shows a significant difference between 3 and 1 and 3 and 2. So this tells me that I have a significant difference between groups 1 and 3 and 2 and 3. And if I look up at the, or look, let me find the descriptive statistics. Here we go. So you can kind of see here between these that, uh, yeah, we have uh, quite a bit of difference between 3 and 1 and 3 and 2, but there is not a big difference. Apparently, it's not a significant difference between 1 and 2. All right, so now what we should do, we have this uh, output box here. We should also save that output for later consultation. So I have the output, output box chosen. I'll come over to File and choose to Save As. And this is the output. Again, I have to choose the location, which is a little bit of a, of a pain, but I can find it. All right, so I'll put the output. What name do I want to give it? Well, I'll give it something a little bit more descriptive. I'll put one and save. All right, well, there you have it. That was a quick introduction on how to run an analysis of variance using SPSS. In follow-up videos, I'll show how to use SPSS to run several of the other analyses we constructed in the course.